is talk about personal growth and and the the reason for it and, and why we want to constantly be doing personal growth. Alita is a huge personal growth person. Um, I watch her every day. I mean, she she's faithful and she just says that she listens to something every day or reads something every day. She, she really does. I mean, it's every day. And I know for myself coming from my background, you know, growing up extremely poor poverty mindset in Clay County, Tennessee, my life didn't really change. Even though I was, I had gone through college, my life really didn't change until I started uh, reading personal growth and seeking out personal growth, self help, whatever you want to call it. That section of the bookstore where, you know, everybody goes to contact people for their business opportunity, <laughs> the self-help section. And the book that really changed everything for me, there was two of them. One was called Skill with People, which I've talked about a ton because I was so shy. I wouldn't talk to anyone. And the other one was called The Magic of Thinking Big. And The Magic of Thinking Big did a little something for me. It, it shifted my emotional house. And the thing that I also love about personal growth is that it's constantly changing. We're constantly learning more about the brain, how the brain functions. There's, I mean, there's people out there who their whole life is dedicated to figuring out how our brain works and why we only use, what is it, 10% of it. And, you know, how to how to expand, how to change and things through our, our mental capacity. And when I first met Alita, we, uh, we had a lunch date uh, and... At the end of the day, you know, we walked through the parking lot and I, you know, put her back in her car. I got back in my truck and, you know, it's one of those things where like I had a few messages on my phone. So it just took me a second before I got taken off and I see her whip out this giant book. I mean, this massive book and she just starts reading it right there in the parking lot of the restaurant we were in. And so I rolled my window down. I said, what are you doing? And she's like, I just want to read a little bit. And it was called, um, Oh goodness, honey, you might have to hop on here and tell me what it was called. It was like the the mind of the child. And it was basically it was a personality book studying. It was the whole brain child. The whole brain child. That's <laughs> yes. what it was called. The whole brain you were, child. You were, yeah, it was weird. I don't know why. <laughs> but I mean, I was like, wow, that's fascinating. She's studying how the mind, you know, how the mind works. So um saying all that to set up this. So um, I heard a talk a long time ago, uh, and you call it what you will, um, the enemy or whatever, but that voice in your head that keeps you from doing what you know you should be doing. And the guy who was doing the talk was very successful. And he said, you know, he said, why is it that when you know you need to get up and go work out, you lay in the bed? Why is it that when you know you need to walk across the room and shake hands with someone and meet them, you don't? And he said, it's because of the enemy. And he says, the enemy, and because I'm a man, I'm going to use man. It's called, he's called the lazy man. He said, inside you, you have two people. You have the ambitious man and you have the lazy man. He goes, and the lazy man will always move to comfort. He'll always keep you where you're comfortable, where it doesn't hurt, where there's no pain. It's our base natural instinct. Our brain's design is to say, hey, keep yourself safe. Don't make yourself uncomfortable. Stay warm, stay dry, stay fed, stay safe. That's our basic, the, our id, our unconscious brain. That's its main objective. Keep us safe, keep us fed, keep us dry, and, and well, keep us warm or cool in the summer, you know? It's to protect us. It's there for protection. What we do moves counter to most of our base instincts. You're putting yourself out there all the time. You're making yourself uncomfortable. You're putting yourself in vulnerable positions. You know, your brain, as far as your brain's concerned, you might as well be, uh, you know, dancing naked in front of a tiger. You know, that's kind of how it sees itself. It's like, oh, don't do that. Cover yourself up. Get out of here. It doesn't know the difference, right? So that's that's what he called the lazy man. So fast forward 20 years, 25 years, and I, I I know there's a lot of negatives, a lot of positives, a lot of thoughts and opinions about Tony Robbins, but I actually love Tony Robbins. Um, I think he's amazing. 
And I think he's helped more people than probably just about anybody. Well, he did a an interview on a podcast with a comedian by the name of Theo Vaughn. I don't recommend Theo Vaughn. I think he's hilarious, but his his material is uh it may not be for this crowd right here on this call. But Theo grew up uh, pretty rough. I, I relate to him, you know, how he grew up. He grew up very poor in some really bad situations, and he's overcome that. And in this video, he tells um, Tony Robbins, he says, he's like, man, he's like, I have trouble telling myself I'm proud of myself. And now this is a guy who's, he's made it to the top. He's got a very successful podcast. He sells out theaters. Like he's doing well. He lives down the road here in Franklin. And he said, I have trouble telling myself I'm proud of myself. And Tony Robbins just nods his head. He's like, yeah, I understand that. And he goes, why? Tony Robbins asked him, says, why do you think that is? And he goes, well, he goes, it's like, it's like I've had those feelings for so long. They're like my friends. You know, that's, if I, if I, if I tell myself I'm proud of myself, then I'm betraying my friend who got me through all this stuff to get me to where I'm at. And Tony Robbins leans up in his chair because you could tell Theo Vaughn had engaged him. And he said, that's your emotional house. And that's, that's the new term I'm using for the lazy man, my emotional house. He said, those are the thoughts and beliefs that you've come to believe about yourself. Deep, your deep core identity that, you know, you use them for positive. He's like, but you can't tell yourself you're proud of yourself because you're so emotionally scarred. And it just, it just hit me. It's like, what do we say when we really, you know, they always say daylight's the best disinfectant. What, what core belief do you have about yourself? Really and truly. Does anybody ever stop and think about like what's what in your heart of hearts when no one's around and things don't go the way you think they should? What are you thinking about yourself? What do you think? The actual time. I got their microphone on. I got it. Okay. I just, I you know, I know for me, I'll use myself as an example. When I'm when I'm by myself and I'm doing something, say I'm working on a project and I screw up, I will I will almost laugh at myself like that figures. And in my core, I think deep down, I feel like I'm an imposter, like I'm a I'm a screw up. I don't really know everything I think I know. And that comes, you know, that's just a core belief that through childhood and things like that, that I've developed. Now, like I said, work on it every day. But I just wonder if we're really honest with ourselves, what is our core belief about ourselves? Michael, I'm going to pick on you because on the cruise, you told me something that just, Alita and I talked about it when we got back home. You told me that you joined the Marines because someone told you you couldn't. That you were, you were not tough enough to be a Marine. And I'm going to put you on the spot, and it's, I hope you're okay with it. But will you talk just a little bit about, like, that's a big, for someone to say, hey, you're not tough. And then you go and give four, five, six life, years of your life away to prove a point. Talk about that core belief. What was it about that that moved you to action? Um, I mean, I appreciate you putting me on the spot because I'll tell you that that meal that we sat and had took me so far outside my wheelhouse that I realized um, there was a lot of, a lot of, uh, when you get put on the spot by somebody that you respect and you look up to, coming out of your comfort zone, there, there's fight or flight. Um, and I won't go too, too deep into that, but what I told you was, yeah, like, I had a girl that I was a cheerleader with in college. And she said, you know what? You're only an Army ROTC because you don't have the boss to be a Marine. And at that point in time, I was a nationally ranked cheerleader. I was an Eagle Scout. 
I had been on search and rescue teams with Civil Air Patrol. We'd saved lives. We'd, we'd done incredible things. And to fast forward, um, you know, you're, you're sitting here and you're talking about this. And the one thought that keeps on coming is you need to do better. Well, she said, you're not tough enough. If I'm tough enough, then I'm better. I need to be better. And it was like this complex that I always needed to be better. And there wasn't any reason for that. But I always needed to be better. And I always needed to challenge myself. So when she told me, like, oh, you're, you're just doing it because you're not tough enough to be a Marine, there was something to prove there. Yeah. And I don't know that that's entirely healthy. Um, it turned into a 20 year career. You know, by the time I lost track of her, I'd already done two combat deployments. I did two more after that with my wife, had an incredible family, did two more deployments after that, you know, responded to, to Benghazi when that whole thing was going on, on one of the task forces that just all kinds of things. Um, and I apologize because I think I'm a little bit distracted from your conversation. I went back to that cruise and to that conversation, but just thinking about like, if you can challenge, if you can recognize where that challenge is coming from, where that belief is coming from, it, it's, it's the greatest stepping stone. And I hope that makes sense because truly that one moment i can look at the almost eight years i've been with this company and i shared with y'all when i broke down in my room crying hysterical because i realized my calling my need to help other people the fact that our life is so short and if we don't appreciate that we will miss it but at that one moment when i realized like i am doing better i am already above so many and i'm sitting with these incredible people it's enough um, I yeah, don't know that, if that's that, your yeah. question or not. I went back in time there. For no, me. that's that's perfect. So, like your your core belief was that you need to do better, and it would it was is almost a restlessness. I bet where like you could go to the gym and you're you know you're a very fit Jack dude, but I got to get five more sets in because I I'm just not I haven't done enough. I need to do better, and that's that's leveraging that's leveraging your core belief, negative or positively. And, you know, I talk about the inner matrix program that I've gone through and uh, my, my coach, he says, he goes, I literally have multimillionaires who are miserable. They leverage their misery into wealth. He's like, because that's the only way they know how to deal with it. They don't know how to deal with the lazy man, the their emotional house in another way. You know, some people will just roll over and die. Some people stand up and fight. It's the fight or flight that Michael talked about and being aware of that emotion. The reason I bring it up this morning is like being aware of that core belief that you think about yourself, that emotional house that you have being aware of that is the first step being able to leverage it so that you don't, whenever you see that your dream team are across the room <clears throat> that you've been wanting to talk about <clears throat> with a, with the business about for the whole time you've been in, when they walk in the room, and you start to shrink back because you're so, you get sweaty palms. You don't want to talk to them. You don't want to message them. Being aware of, oh, hey, this is my core belief. This is that that lazy man in me that's saying, hey, you, you're afraid of people. Well, I'm not afraid of people. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reject that right now, and I'm going to move past it. You know, I'm going to be uncomfortable. I'm going to do it. Or that emotional loop that you start that says, hey, I need to do better. No, I'm absolutely enough. And I'm so worthy to walk over here and meet this person. Do you, does that make sense, everybody? Like being, understanding why you think your thoughts, why you fail your, and I, I use the word fail, why you come up short in, and let yourself down. A lot of times is because of the negative core beliefs we have about ourselves. You know? I'm an outsider. I don't belong. No, you belong. You you bloom right where you're planted. You know, or maybe you have you maybe you have reservations about you know can I actually lead people? You know, there's a there's a ton of different things, but being aware of it, stopping and actually figuring out how does this brain of mine work. Whenever I think about um, when I think about times where I've really made myself proud, how did I feel? 
when I have times when I really made myself ashamed, how did I feel? And think about your emotions and what your motivations were in that moment. Because that's that's that that base level thinking that we're all born with that wants to keep us safe. It's not bad. You just have to understand it's just trying to keep you safe. But you've evolved, you've adapted into a different person. You're not fighting bears with sticks in the woods anymore. You know, you're you're selling pink drink. You're sharing a business opportunity. And so your brain, when you start feeling uncomfortable, your brain still wants you to run back to the to the hut or the cave or the help or whatever. And you just have to take control of it and capture your thoughts. Alita says it all the time. You have to take control of your thoughts. You have to capture your thoughts. Because where your mind flow, you will go, right? What you dwell on, what you continually dwell on will come into existence. And that's because our mind's so powerful. It's so powerful. The power of, of thought manifestation. But knowing, but knowing why we're thinking our thoughts, being able to direct our thoughts, being able to direct the flow of thoughts, being able to, to talk to ourselves properly is so valuable and critical. There's a book called uh, What to Say When You Talk to Yourself by Shad Hemstetter. And it's an amazing book. It's older, but it's an amazing book. And what he says is that, especially people like us, network marketers, you get in a business by yourself with a community of positive people. You see real quick, okay, my, my the way I think isn't going to take me to where I want to go. I want to start talking positive. I want to have confident expectation. I want to, I want to move forward in life. And he said, so, what we do is imagine your, your mind is filled with furniture and those furniture represents thoughts. And he goes, and when you get into a business like this, you maybe have image issues. You may have um, confidence issues. You may have a plethora of issues and that that's represented by broken down furniture in your, in your mind. He goes, and then you start learning about yourself. You start growing and you slowly start taking those broken down pieces of furniture out of the apartment of your mind. And he goes, and that's great. He said, eventually you have all that negativity cleaned out and you're a super positive person. But what happens is if you don't put something back in there, you're going to be standing in the middle of that apartment and you're going to be like, I'd really like to have a place to sit down. And so you'll go back to the storage room in the back of your mind and you'll get that broken down lazy boy You'll bring him and you'll set him back up in your mind. And that lazy boy could represent self-doubt. It could represent um, old thoughts and feelings you have about yourself. And you'll set up camp. After you did all that work to clear the space in your mind, you bring those old negative thoughts back in. So what he says and so what you say when you talk to yourself is that you have to find new furniture to bring in. And that's where the personal growth is so valuable. I know I'm preaching to the choir here a little bit because I think if you're on a, a power 30 call on a Wednesday morning at 9 and 30 a.m., you're you're seeking out personal growth and development. So this talk is more for the people you're going to be helping. Because you, if you're on this call, you understand I need good things put into my brain. I need good thoughts moving forward. I need to protect my belief. You guys know it. But the thousands of people we're going to impact don't. All you have to do is get on uh, Instagram or uh, I don't even know uh, what is the, it used to be called Twitter. I think it's called X now. And you read people's comments. There's a lot of junk thinking out there. There's a lot of just people who just don't know more. They don't know all they could be. I'd call them lost. Because if they really knew the, the power that they possess, they'd do more with their life. And that's sort of the vision that we sell through Plexus, right? Yeah, come for the pink drink, come for the gut health, stay for the life-changing community. Stay for the life-changing impact you could have on this world. Like Michael said, think about all the people. You could be a nuclear bomb of good impact on this world. Because if you share what you know with others, you could change generations for sure. 
my my family tree has been changed forever because of the things I learned as a young man reading personal development books and growing. Like my kids will not struggle with the things I struggled with growing up as a young man. You know, they'll have their own fight. They'll have their own struggle. But the things I struggle with won't be a problem for them because I'm going to teach them, you know, or teaching them. Does that make sense at all? So like I said, you guys, I'm preaching to the choir this morning. You all, you know, you're on the path. You're on the path of uh, of growth and enlightenment and all the other things. But I encourage you, really think about what your core, what is that core belief that's holding you back or that you've leveraged for good or bad to get where you're at? That emotional house I talked about. What is it? And then just think, maybe just remind yourself every time you get the sweaty palms and you're about to, to move out, out of your comfort zone and you start getting those thoughts, just tell your brain, hey, I'm not hunting bear here, you know? I'm not, I'm not being chased by a tiger. I'm just going to have a conversation with somebody, you know, and calm that emotion. You know, it's really not a big deal. I mean, what are they going to do? It's not life or death. You're not going to die. They just say no. You smile and you move on. <laughs> it's not that big a deal. It's not war, is it, Michael? No one's shooting back. <laughs> it's not that big a deal. No, no one's going to shoot at you in Flex. Nobody's going to shoot at you. I can say that with confidence. And if anybody does shoot at you, you are in the wrong neighborhood. Um. Anyways, that's all I got this morning. Uh, I hope everybody has a great day. And uh, we love y'all. We believe in y'all. And uh, I can't wait to see you next time. So that's it for me. Talk to you later.